Hello and welcome to Cabin Fever Radio Novellas, season numero dos, where an isolated group of talented actors and creators come together to stave off their madness and yours and keep us all entertained through dramatic readings of your favorite movies and TV shows, along with original material. This episode is sponsored by Ruano Films, but we'll hear more about them later in the show. I'm your host, Mr. David Ruano, and in this season, we have the pleasure to bring you an original script that will be broken down into four parts. And joining us for this reading is Kelsey Jaffer, Hello. Robert Christopher Smith, hey guys, Mariah Hart, Hi. Uh, Braxton Ria, hopefully I Hi. said it correctly, Jess Bernal, I remember that one, and Marissa Martin. Ayo. And the story is called Vengeance Turns, written and directed by Robert Christopher Smith. And he can give us a little bit more insight on the story. Guys, what we're doing is we're, we're shooting this live uh, for this live stream, but we are going to also, you'll hear us throughout, talk about sound effects and things like that, that on the final version of this will be in place. So there will also be a produced podcast version of this after it's all over. And away we go, right, Dave? Yes. And so, so be, uh, again, before we get all into it, make sure... To follow us, you can see all the different uh, tags for Instagrams on the description. If you're on YouTube and Facebook, you could chat with us and we can respond to them live. And uh, be sure to thank Mr. David Rano for getting Rano Films to sponsor this video. But other than that, uh, we could get right into it. Vengeance turns. We open on a, a chaotic overlap of like rhythmic we're gonna hear the crashing of horse hooves and guns being cocked. <laughs> guns being fired, ripping, stabbing sounds, the feral scream of a woman who's enraged, enraged in bloody battle, and the sound will fade. Vengeance Turns. Welcome to our first installment of the Vengeance Turns radio show and podcast. Tune in each week for the next four weeks and hear the tale of Rebecca Falcone as everything is taken from her in 1876 California and her lust for bloody vengeance turns her into someone else entirely. Here we'll hear more of those sound effects, bang, bang, guns cocking, horses neighing. As our tale opens in Blayton, California, we find a group of three women standing huddled around a wooden stove in the back of a general store with their backs to everyone and everything else. Their only concern is their conversation, which has been focused on the brutal murders of several in their community in the past several days. The most recent only the night before. One of these women, Hester Blake, younger than the rest, stands out due to a black eye, which is on its way to normal size and color, and a small, nearly healed cut on her cheek. She is the only survivor of these attacks so far, and she swears that the perpetrators were the local Native Americans who have refused to stay on their reservation here we'll have the sound effects of a door opening and a little bell ringing. Ding, 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 ding. Now, in walks Rebecca Falcone, who listens in on their conversations and becomes upset as she listens. My boys sit out there on some days and just shoot the blazes out them engines. The way the engines shoot buffalo, just bang, 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 bang until they're all gone. That's what they say anyway. It's a shame you have to waste the bullets at all. Eventually that strong federal government back east has got to do something. I mean, why they don't send all those troops out here to kill those horrid creatures is beyond me. The entire countryside out here remains infested with them. 
Extermination seems to be the only answer. There is no helping them. There is no civilizing them. What, getting rid of them once and for all is as much a blessing to them as it is to us. Pardon me, what did you just say? A blessing? Extermination? A, a, a blessing? How can you... Rebecca, perhaps you should leave this conversation to those better suited. Those who know a bit more about... A bit more ab about what? Extermination? About Indians? About murderous animals. Are you deaf? Blind? Those things are out there just outside of town right now. We keep giving them their own places to live. Very nice places if you ask me. Yes, yes, every bit as nice as what we have here. But what do they do? Where are they now? Everywhere except the land we have reserved just for them. It ain't like my boys are out there hunting them or anything. If they stayed on their lands, if they understood, if they weren't lurking about, my boys would have, would have no reason to be shooting them all at the time. If you let those animals have their way, they would come into town, rape every one of us, and leave our scalps to go sell down in Mexico. Would you stay in town if you knew? Would you stay in town if you were hungry and you knew there was a rabbit just beyond our last road? It turns Mrs. Scott. Which animals, which tribe of animals is it this time? Far as I know, the only Indians to be moved recently, the only ones anywhere close to us right now, are Kumie. They're nothing like Apache, not like Lakota. They're Indians, Rebecca. Subhuman savages. Maybe one is less violent than the other, but there is no such thing anywhere as a peaceful Indian. What y'all are doing here seems very dangerous. If there isn't already a problem with that local group of Kumie, do you think accusing them of murder, of being uncivilized savages, is going to make things better? What do you mean if Mrs. Payne's boys have shot at least one or two every day on their land? Not to mention the horror that was visited on the Dubois family this last Sunday Eve. And our very own Mrs. Blake here. She rubs her hands tenderly on Hester's shoulders and back. Poor Hester lost her husband just two weeks ago, and she only barely escaped death at the hands of those savages herself. God's will. In everything I have ever read about, in everything I have ever read about or know about these tribes. And what exactly do you know, Miss Falcone? A rebel in your book, learn in Navate while you can. We'll hope you come to your senses before the real world out there ends up butchering you like it did me. Before you lose everything. That wonderful husband, beautiful children of yours. And then we hear the sound of a few tools like shovels and things being clanked around together. Clank, 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 clank. We hear some heavy footsteps approaching. Excuse me, Mrs. Blake, ma'am. I got that wagon loaded up just like you asked. I'm ready to get you home, if you're ready, that is. Did I say I was ready? Do I look ready? I'll be along momentarily, wait outside with the horses. We hear Jefferson's heavy footsteps walking away. He brushes against Rebecca, and there's a stack of cans that falls over, and he says, Excuse me, miss. And then we hear the sound of cans being fumbled with and, and righted. Oh, here, honey. Let me help you. We hear four cans being set. The door crashes open. The bell jingles. Tingling, ding, tingling, ling. And we hear the heavy footsteps of several men. First, the Blakes, and now the Doom Boys, and who knows who else. We're gonna shoot and scalp every damn engine we can find. Well, you drunkards are not going to find no engines in here. What exactly can I do for you, Roscoe? Please tell me what you need before you destroy my store. Well, thank you. I'll come again later. Thank you. 
We hear later footsteps of Rebecca running out and the door slamming shut behind her and that bell jingling again as an exclamation point. But then we're outside with Rebecca, outside the store now. So everything that we hear now is a little muted when we hear it from inside the store. It's still easy to hear, but it's definitely muted. I'm cut to get out of here. We hear the drunk uh, number two, who's Leon and Hester from outside. We hear them inside, partially muted. Rope. We're gonna shoot them, scalp them, and hang them. I'll pay you men five dollars for each scalp you bring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So now we're at the Falcone home, and we'll have some music and stuff, and there'll be some musical cues to help us with this. And those guys saying, yeah, 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 we'll fade out. And now we'll hear a door opening at the Falcone home and a leather like satchel, which is essentially her grocery bag back then being thrown onto the table. And that's where we're at now. How was town, my love? Cold. Ah, mi amor, spring is here though. The warm, beautiful days are coming soon. You can feel it in the air already. I know, I know. I really meant that awful Mrs. Payne who runs the store and those hens that sit in there out and clucking and cackling nonsense all day about things they know nothing about. Did something happen, Rebecca, in town? Well, they were talking about the Dubois family, about what happened. Yes, my God, that slaughter, such a tragedy. Frank was a good man and he had a wonderful five, a wife and family. And as soon after the attack of the Blakes, you know, Mrs. Blake was killed and poor Hester hasn't left her bed, only barely spoken since. Poor Hester. There's nothing poor about Hester. Her husband's probably relieved to be dead. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but she was right there, right alongside those awful old biddies blaming the Kumier, calling them savages. Yeah, see, I heard the same thing. She didn't speak much after the attack. When she did speak at all, she only said they sounded and looked like the local Kumier Indians. And there have been reports of them leaving their reservations. But it wasn't the Kumier, Michael. They are a peaceful people. I, mean, I don't know much. My dad made sure I was raised just like him. Ven aquí, mi amor. White as the whitest clouds. I never even got to talk about mom or her mom or our people. I remember my grandma really good and I picked up what I could here and there. This ain't them, Michael. Those people are already out there starving and being hunted. And now, now what? Did you tell them those biddies, give them the facts and set them straight? No, I tried to, but a group of men came in saying the whole Dubois family got scalped by engines. The drunkest one said him and the whole drunk posse were gonna scalp every engine they could find. Mrs. Blake offered to pay them. She offered what? Wait, what happened? I don't know. I was so upset that I ran out of the store. I forgot to pay. And I rode home as fast as I could. I was so upset I forgot your paper too. Oh, and I know you have to complete the paperwork for Mrs. Blake to properly inherit Mr. Blake's shares in Blake Gold. Oh, it was the whole reason I went in the first place. There's a muffled crying as Rebecca cries into Michael's chest. <laughs> no worry about it, mi amor. I must visit Hester tomorrow morning to confirm her plans. She says she is not releasing her shirt from her dead husband's gold mine. I recommend that she cash them out, but uh, she wouldn't hear of it. I will go to Payne's General and pay Mrs. Payne while I pick up the papers too. Once I have Hester's signature, I will wrap up this business with Blake Gold. He holds her. Look at me, Rebecca. Look at my eyes. I promise. 
If you like, we can take Eduardo and Emma, move away anywhere we want, back to the city, back to civilization. It's supposed to be very beautiful back east in Baltimore. Anywhere, as long as you're by my side. I love you so much. We think I like, mi amor. Te quiero mucho. It was a passionate kiss. And then the music will again change cues and we'll fade back in and hear kitchen utensils and the sound of food simmering at a pot, you know, cooking and the crackling flame of, of Rebecca as she cooks dinner. Emma, dear, go get your papa and brother. Time for dinner. Yes, mama. There's child-sized footsteps hustling. And the door opens and closes quickly. Emma is partially muted. We hear her outside from inside. Daddy! Eddie! The door crashes open, but it doesn't close. Small footsteps rush in. Mama, Emma said she ate all the cornbread. <laughs> she did. Well, let's see if we can find some more. Come here, let mommy carry your big boy to the table. We hear the door finally close behind them. Heavier, more measured footsteps of Michael Falcone enter. Doom, doom, doom. And the lighter scooting footsteps of Emma. Do, 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 do. Yay! Mmm, mmm, bread. Mm. Excuse you, young man. Michael, honey, did you see anyone while you were outside? See? Who? No one, nothing, forget it. Then we hear the sound of the four chairs all scooting in and around the table. Emma, mijita, will you please say grace? Yes, Papa. <clears throat> Give us, O oh God, of the nourishing meal, well-being of the body, the frame of the soul. Give us, O oh God, of the honey sweet milk, the sap and the savior of the fragrant farms. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we hear the sound effects of food being slopped onto plates, silverware clanking onto plates, things like that. Mama, was Henry Dubois a bad boy? Is that why God let him get killed by the engines? Edward Michael, we do not use that word. But that's what the boys at school say. Well, we do not say it in this house or anywhere else for that matter. Yes, ma'am. We just had this little pause and still with the sounds of the silverware, the cutting, the sounds of them eating, all of our players chewing and enjoying their food. Mm. 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 But, but was he a bad boy? And his daddy too? No, mijito. They didn't die because they were bad people. They died because of bad people, very bad. <clears throat> God doesn't punish people that way, my darling. Henry was a very good boy. He's in heaven now. Here, have some more cornbread? Yeah, thanks. Mmm. Bill was God's most loyal follower, and all types of bad things happen to him. Sometimes... Bad things just happen to good people. That's why God has servants. Mm. Revengers to execute wrath upon them what doth evil. Then there's another brief pause filled only with the sounds of Edward mainly chewing and enjoying his cornbread for about a second. Romans chapter 13. Uh-huh. But later that night, as silence and stillness filled their loving home, the Falcone family has their peaceful descent into slumber shattered forever by the front door splintering and three intruders crashing in. You'll hear more about that after a word from our sponsor. <laughs> and on that note, 
This episode is sponsored by Ruano Films. Have you ever had an idea for a movie or TV show but don't know where to start? It can seem very daunting when you start to realize all the manpower you will need. From a director, camera off, first AC, sound, boom up, line producer, g &E, editor, colorist, etc., etc. Don't even mention someone to handle the budget and schedule the part. But no need to fear, Ronald Films is here. Ronald Films is a production company that works hand in hand with indie filmmakers, writers, actors, and creators, and can handle all the logistics to produce a film and turn your idea into reality. If you're ready to make that movie idea you can't stop thinking about, contact Rano Films for a free consultation by mentioning Cabin Fever Radio via their contact page at ruanofilms.com. That is R-U-A-N-O-F-I-L-M-S dot com. Don't forget to mention Cabin Fever Radio. They will help you get the ball rolling and make that movie. Thank you, Ruano Films. Welcome back to Vengeance Turn. Before our word from our sponsor, we heard the dinner after dinner with the Falcons, the night, the silence of the night, the stillness of their loving home, the Falcone family, their peaceful descent into slumber was shattered forever. The front door of their home was splintered and three intruders were crashing in. Here we hear the sound effects of the door getting kicked in, kaboom! And the three, the three heads, uh, three heavy footsteps of, of the heavy footsteps of three men coming in. Boom, 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 boom. Ah, mommy, I'm ready, mommy. Bastards sneaking and attacking us in the dark. I'll kill you. Uh. I'm sorry. Oh, Scufflings of uh, Michael starting a fight with the two men. There you go. Thank you. Then there's the sound effects of a glass or a carafe, something being broken as Michael crashes it over one of these guys' heads. Ha! There! I got you! Ah! Oh. Michael! And then we hear the sound effects of a body falling hard. Thud! And then we hear the sound of the, Michael's gun skidding across the floor towards Rebecca. Michael, your gun! Uh, I'll grab it. And then we hear Jefferson step down his foot hard, boom, onto Rebecca's arm, and we hear the bones breaking. Little birdie only has one week now. Stay down, little birdie. Ah! <gasps> Mommy! 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 You two, shut those kids up. Then we hear the sound effects of heavy footsteps. Your daddy almost killed me, kid. No! 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 no. no. <laughs> we hear the sound effects of punches and thuds as these children are being brutally murdered just through being punched and, and beaten to death. My babies! No, my babies! Oh, Michael, Michael, please get up. We need you. Him? He ain't going nowhere. None of you are. Your kids are dead. We hear the gurgling of two dying children. Then we hear the sound of two corpses being thrown down. So is he. Then we hear bang of Jefferson's gun as he shoots Michael Falcone. No! Michael, no! No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that did it. Fuck is dead as hell now. Got him with his own gun. It's a nice gun, too. <laughs> Thanks. And then we hear Rebecca kind of shuffling and trying to crawl away. Hey, where are you trying to crawl off to? Let's see what we got here now. You at the store today, right? You fucking angel lover or something? That only makes this more fun. <laughs> No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You know what else? I think your scalp will look real nice up on my wall. What do you think, boys? Woo! We hear the knife being pulled out of the scabbard. Yeah, she's alive. Oops, sorry. Shit, boy. Sorry, sorry. Boy, 
boys, get Simon in here with my hunting knife. Simon! Then we hear the door creak open. Get on in here, boy. Yo, daddy ready for you. Grab that sharp knife. Uh, here's Papa's knife. Haven't seen nobody out here. Nobody at all. You are safe to keep out your work. Think I think I'll back out here and, and keep watch. No, no, boy. Ain't like that. This, this is for you, my person. Tonight, I'm gonna watch you finally become a man. Well, uh, uh, you you want me to? But, but I'm just here to keep watch. But I'm good for right. Remember. Everybody's got to grow up sometime, boy. Ain't got to be around to take care of your pathetic ass forever. Now's your time. We hear the body being shaken and the clothes rustling. No. No, no, no. Come here now. It's easy. Jump down there. Get up in there. Your first time gonna be with a real proper woman. We giving you that to bust your cherry, boy. Yeah, yeah. Your dad said we gonna get you even first. Shut the fuck up, Oscar. Or you won't take no turn at all. Go find them legal papers. You mean like papers writing stuff? If you want me to, but she even awake? Yeah, alive? she's alive. Shit, boy. Look how she's squirming. She gonna make you feel real good. God damn it, Oscar. Yeah. Oh, sorry, 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 guys. We we'll do that again. God damn it, Oscar. Yes. Paper with writing on it. You find it or seriously, you're fucking your hands tonight. Maybe a horse. Go. You too, boy. Go. Uh, I can't. Shut that cat shit up. Shut it up or you're the one getting fucked, boy. We hear a big heavy footstep. Boom. We hear the grab of a throat being squeezed. Stop. Now, get your pants down and get inside that white woman right now. If you ain't gonna become a man today, I just know that shit ain't ever gonna happen. We hear the sound effect of Simon collapse to the ground as Jefferson lets him go. I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. Fuck can't. It ain't can't, boy. It's won't. And I can't abide that. I can't abide that no longer at all. You can't do shit. You ain't shit. You ain't never gonna be a man. You ain't never gonna be nothing more than nothing. Can't abide that. Come on. Now, boy, do your thing. Yeah, like your pa said, help if you pull down your pants down first. <laughs> She's ready. I, I can't. I can't, Daddy, I, I can't. We hear a sound effect of Jefferson actually kick Simon. We hear the sound effect of Jefferson grabbing Simon and choking him. Fuck can't. Fuck daddy. <laughs> and fuck you, boy. This is where we part ways, boy. Say hi to your whole mama in hell when you get there. You're, you're killing me. We hear the sound effect of Oscar tapping Jefferson on the shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't make all the from the old kid, let's fuck this space. <laughs> Jefferson bellows with rage. Rah! Let me, let me go! Ah! And then we hear the sound effect of a kicking sound. We hear a thud. We hear scrambling out the door as Simon escapes. The door slams shut behind him. And... Don't you dare fucking put your hands on me, you greasy piece of shit. You want to get fucked so bad, you fucking touch me again, it'll be your ass on the ground bleeding. We hear sound effects of the door being thrown open. We hear the cocking of a gun. Give me one second, you guys. 
You better run, Simon. You better run and never stop, boy. I told you before and I mean it. Next time I see you will be the last time. You piece of shit half breed. She's all yours, boys. We hear the sound effect of Rebecca's nightgown being ripped. He <laughs> got them papers, boss. I'm next now, right? <laughs> I gotta turn right. And then we'll fade again. A little bit of musical cue to let us know that we're fading. And sullen silence fills the air around the carnage at the Falcone home as the invaders slink back away under the cover of darkness. The bodies of Michael Falcone and his wife, Rebecca, along with their children, Edward and Emma, lie tossed about their home like the debris of what had once been their lives. But from that dead silence, a single, sudden, raspy breath is heard. <laughs> not dead. I'm not not dead. <laughs> we have the sound effects of someone crawling. No, 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 no. The crawling continues until Rebecca falls off her porch. Hey. Hey, wait, don't, don't. Oh, we hear the I, athletic running in of Simon towards Rebecca. I, I can't believe you're still alive. Hey, hey, it's okay now. Can, can you hear me? Do, do you know your name? Mi amor. Okay, okay, Mia, Mia, listen, Mia, I, I got to get you out of here. You, you hurt bad, and you'd be dead real damn quick if, if my daddy comes and finds you, and you ain't out already. I got you. I, I got you, Mia. I'm Simon. Uh, what? Kuma? Yay? Did you say Kuma? Yay? We ain't never make it out all the way to the reservation, but I, I'll get you out to the old fort on the way. Come on, I'll, I'll help you onto my horse. Then we hear the sound effect of a horse clopping away. I must be crazy. Only person in town wishing there's engines out there. We see, I guess. The musical cues will fade. We'll come back. Just before light of morning. One more time, sorry guys. Just before light of morning breaks, Simon sees the abandoned fort in the distance where Indians have been rumored to gather off their reservation. He hears a noise, and as he looks around to see if anyone is watching him, finds himself staring at the wrong end of a spear. <sighs> We have the soft footsteps of several warriors, and we hear a slight murmuring around him. Uh, Kumaye, we're, we're here for help. Kumaye, we, please, we need help. We, we both, uh, Kumaye, I uh, need, need your help. Simon pats his chest. Simon, Simon, I'm, I'm Simon. This is, uh, she's Mia, Mia, uh, Mia. Please uh, help us. We don't. I. I don't. I. I don't speak Kumite. For the sound effect, we hear a single set of light footsteps approach Simon. Neither, my sweet boy, do we. And that's the end. How cool is that? Yes. <laughs> Thing. 
I was, I was truly, truly moved. You guys, you don't understand what I've been through the past three years. Tried to hear that, so that was. I mean, I was like tearing up and stuff. Like while we while we were reading it, I was like, yo, know, I was so into the story and into my own story of getting it here. So yeah, wow, that was really, really intense. I appreciate it. This is the shortest chapter. <laughs> so this was what about 22 pages i think the next one is 30 and then like 34 and then like 34 or something like that so it's the others are just a just a, just a bit longer after this what did you guys think how'd you feel it was amazing Bye. yeah <laughs> it was a blast David's yeah. Oscar, I know a couple of us were cracking up, but Oscar <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh, I was dying. <laughs> yeah, it was too. Yeah. It, it was part on uh, stress because uh, I lost audio for a bit from you guys. <laughs> oh, no. So I was scrambling. Uh, and uh, yeah, because I had a different voice in mind, but I was like, eh, I'm, I'm, "Hey, do, I'm do we all want to? Should we all stop recording just so that we don't have too big of files? Uh, Go ahead and get them. Yes. Oh, you know, so it, I stopped uh, after I was done. Sorry. Good. Good. I'm stopping it's now. Okay. Yeah. If you guys, you guys can all stop. Stop it now. I just had a. Uh, the reason why I clapped at the end was uh, also part of me resyncing because again I lost audio, so I was like, uh, uh, Yeah, I, I saw your picture go away, David. But we 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 kept you all the way through it. But we lost your picture for a moment. Yeah, th that was part of Zoom crashing again wow. like i usually because again i'm going through some software like this is a good example of what we can hear on our post show a little reasoning behind what we do on uh how to make this a little better every single time hopefully hopefully but yes uh on that note i before i enter the why we lost us that will be seen on the post show so be sure to follow us on our patreon page which is patreon.com slash cabin fever radio and by supporting us you can see a little bit more in depth on the, uh, some of the behind the scenes as well as exclusive content that you will only see on patreon and you can see the link on the description below as well as if you see if you're looking at us it'll be on the top right side you'll see patreon cabin fever radio uh as well as cabinfeverradio.com and uh this is a good segue on the conclusion for hey, wait, real cabin quick, fever uh, radio. but don't don't go keep yes. live for a second we, we are not going are, live or not exiting uh, but yes. are there is there people out there watching right now yes uh, there is and, hello people is there anybody out there that wears a small t-shirt Thank you. All these <laughs> other people. I'll send you one for sure, Mariah. Oh, you're actors. No, Yay. but no, but I'm at one of. I've only got a handful of these left, and I, I made that ad, and I wanted to say if there's if there's a if there's a fan out there that either wears if there's somebody watching, and they either wear a small or a small. <laughs> I will, I, will, I, yeah. I will I will pay for the postage as long as they're in America. I will pay for the postage and I will send this shirt to you. So all yeah. you got to do. You, you got to raise it a little bit higher oh. so we can see it. Oh, I'm sorry. There, there we go. Yes, I want one. Oh, very nice. That is part of the merch that we are, uh, we've done in the past and we're going to redo it so yeah. you guys can uh, yeah. get t-shirts. We're going to sell these we're all salt gonna do. encrusted hats. Yes, we, we are going to have hats, some apparel, as well as stickers. Uh, you guys know about the coloring pages. And again, you can, you will soon see them on cabinfeverradio.com. I'm jamming that into people's heads. Cabinfeverradio.com. So here's how I'll give that shirt away. If somebody messages me, and not the actors, I'll get with you guys on a separate thing. But if there's somebody watching and you message me on my on my instagram yeah at karaoke crime the first person to to do that will actually get this small shirt just message me so that we can exchange information that way you don't got to make it public or anything but uh, i will so just message me it's right here under my name at karaoke crime that's my handle on, on instagram and now i'm done i fulfilled my obligation i just want to make sure that i actually did that because i advertised it and i would feel like a real asshole 
if I made it all the way through this show and didn't give away a t-shirt, hey, come watch us, come watch us, I'll give you a t-shirt. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, again, thank you everyone who is joining us. Kelsey, Bobby, Mariah, Faxon, Jess, Marissa, me, the dog that was uh, yelling not so long ago. Uh, and again, you can follow all our Instagrams are in the description. Go to cabinfeverradio.com for our past shows as well as uh, future merch that we're going to have and the future shows that we're going to have. And patreon.com slash cabinfeverradio for exclusive content that you can only see there like our post show that we're going to have right after this show. Any final words? No, Mr. Thank, uh, Robert. Thank, thank everybody. I want to, I want to say thank you to anybody and everybody that actually did tune in today, whether it was because you saw the ad, whether it was because you know, one of us, uh, I thank you so much for being here and I invite you to come back because today was the only boring chapter. I know you were probably <laughs> bored out of your minds. Hmm. <laughs> with, with this with this zero action chapter but i promise everything after this is completely a mind effort and just a almost non-stop action so come on back every uh every saturday at live at five and uh and watch us for the next three installments of vengeance turns and then uh, tell your friends and uh listen look for the uh, produced version as well and thank all my actor friends as well thank all you guys this was impossible without you guys so well thank you bobby thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting right, us be a part of this. Gets oh, down man, in your man. soul, don't it? What? That's it gets down in your soul, don't it? It just it just stays with me and you just leave with it. That's right, that's right. <laughs> so again, thank you everybody. This is Cabin Fever Radio Novellas signing off. Oh, say can you see <laughs> by the dawn's early light? <laughs> What's so good? <laughs>